All right, guys, today for 4.2, we're going to write equations in standard form and in point slope form. So those are the, the two objectives for the day. Uh, and basically, you know, last time we talked about um, slope intercept form. So I know these are a lot of terms to try to keep straight. Slope intercept form from yesterday is the form y equals mx plus b. So today, we're going to focus on standard form. Standard form, and make sure you guys are following along in your notes and taking really good notes on this. Um, for standard form, we would have ax plus by is equal to c. That's the standard form of an equation for a line. And then point slope form, which is a really cool one, which gives us a shortcut to what we were doing yesterday, uh, is going to be this guy where we have um, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And that all looks confusing. And you're like, what are all these a's and these b's and these c's? What is all this stuff? Well, I'm going to explain it all, so don't worry. Uh, the a, b, and c, those capital letters, if you see capital letters like that, um, a, b, and c, those things are just going to be equivalent. There's a, those are numbers, essentially. Um, it's in this form, but uh, you'll see it like this. You'll see it something that looks like this. 2x plus 3y is equal to 6 or something like that. Um, and um, anyway, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the other one. But this is what we're doing today. So we're going from slope-intercept form to standard form to point slope form. They're all different forms for the same thing. We're trying to graph a line in various ways. Okay, so standard form again is going to be ax plus by equals c. And then one of the things with standard form is that there's nothing in common with a, b, and c. In other words, if I had like 2x plus 4y equals 6, I could take a 2 out of everything. Right, so if I, if I divide everything by 2 here, I would get x plus 2y is equal to 3. This is in standard form. This technically is not in standard form, so if you can take something out, take it out. And then the other thing is, we don't like fractions in these. So make sure that there's no fractions. If I had a fraction like 1 half x plus 3y equals 9 or something like this, um, to get rid of the fraction, I would just multiply this by its reciprocal, which is 2 over 1. But if I do that here, I have to do it to everything, right? So if I multiply the first one by 2, I get just x. If I multiply the second one by 2 over 1, I get plus 6y. And if I multiply this by 2, I would get 18. Okay, so this would be in standard form. This is not in standard form. So just make sure, put this in your notes, that if it's in standard form, there's no common factors in A, B, and C, okay? No common factors and no fractions in there. The last thing that we do in these is we wanna make sure that the first term is always not negative. So if you got a negative thing, right? Like negative uh, 2x plus 3y equals six, if that first term was negative, what I can do is I can multiply everything by negative 1 to change the sign of the first term. Okay, So we don't want a to be negative. If it is, we just change it by multiplying everything by a negative. So if we do that, we would have 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 6. Those two things are equivalent, but we just like that when the first term is non-negative. This is in standard form. The first one here is technically not in standard form. So a couple of things. No common factors for standard form. No fractions. And no negatives for my first number. Make sure those three things are in your notes. So let's just do one of these here. Example 1 says a group of 96 people are traveling to a nature preserve in small and large vans. Small vans hold 8 people. Large vans hold 12 people. Write an equation that represents the situation. Okay, so we know that small vans plus big vans is equal to 96 people, right? And we know a couple of things about S and B. S holds 8 people, so I can say 8 times 
S, the number of S vans we have, plus 12, because the large vans hold 12 people, 12 times the big, the number of big vans we have is equal to 96 people total. So they just want an equation that looks like this. Um, if you want this in standard, like a standard form equation, uh, the S and B thing I just used for small and big, but I could call those X and Y, couldn't I? I could say 8X plus 12Y is equal to 96. And, um, you know, technically if something is in standard form, I can take a four out of all those things. But here when I'm, you know, when I'm representing a situation like this, it's nice to just keep it like this. But technically in standard form, just so we can talk about it, if something's in standard form, I could actually take a four out of all of those things. Um, and it would represent the same line. Okay, so uh, don't worry about that. For now, I wouldn't worry about that um, because it's looking like in your book. Sorry, I just paused there because I was looking in your book just to make sure. But it's looking like in your book they're keeping it like this. So we can keep it like this as well. Okay, so we're going to leave it like that. But again, in standard form, you could take a 4 out. If you did, it would be this. Uh, four, if I took a 4 out, I'd be left with um, 2x plus 3y is equal to uh, 20, I believe that's 24. Okay, that's an acceptable answer as well. But don't worry about that. For example, one, when we have a word problem, um, we can just leave it like this. Sorry for the confusion, but just want to make sure that you're clear on that. Okay, let's move on to the next section, point slope form. So for point slope form, again, this is going to be y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Super handy when we have a point in a slope, okay, as you'll see here soon. But what's interesting about this equation is that the y's, oops, maybe I don't want a highlight, the y and the x that are here always just stay here. You're going to fill in the highlighted pieces. So you're going to fill in y1, x1, and m. Okay, that will be given to you. So you'll have a slope given to you, or maybe it's not, maybe you'll have to find it, but um, you, you'll need to find a slope and then a point. Once you have a slope and a point, you can use this format. And I'll show you how that works. So here we go. Example two says write this equation in point slope form for the line that passes through negative two, two with a slope of negative three. Okay, so notice, they gave me a point, they gave me a slope, I'm gonna use point slope form. Okay, so I'm gonna just start with the original again, and I, again, get this in your notes. So it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in my point for y1 and x1 and I'm going to plug in a negative 3 for my slope. So it's going to be y minus y1. Well, y1 is 2. Okay, remember, this is x first, then y. Common mistake is that students choose the wrong one there. Is equal to negative 3 times x minus x1. Okay, so it's x minus negative 2. Okay, which is going to end up being a plus there. So don't confuse your signs. So I get y, let's put it in the final, final answer here, y minus 2 is equal to, uh, let's go ahead and distribute this thing out. So if I distribute this thing out, it'll be equal to negative uh, 3x. Okay, and this again turns to positive 2, right? So negative 3 times positive 2 would be minus 6. All right, so again, if they want you to leave it in point slope form, we could keep going here and we could um, reduce this further, okay? Um, so if we ended up doing that, um, what we would do here is we would um, just add two to both sides. So we would get y is equal to negative 3x uh, minus 4. 
And then we're into slope-intercept form, okay? So this form here is point-slope form, all right? This is slightly simplified point-slope form. This is fully simplified point-slope form, which turns us back into slope-intercept form. So all pretty interesting. Uh, then we're going to graph the equation, it says. So to graph this, what we're going to do is we're going to f figure out where our um, y-intercept is. So if you simplify it down to this form, we know that our y-intercept is at negative 4. And then our slope is negative 3, so we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Okay, and then we can also go up 3, back 1. So our, our, um, our line is going to look something like... Man, I can't draw a straight line on this thing. Something like this. Make sure you get your arrows. Make sure the line extends through both axes there. Um, but that's how you would graph the equation. I would simplify it to y equals mx plus b form. Use my y-intercept and my slope. Okay, and then just go from there. All right, so that's example two. Example three uh, it says write an equation in point slope, slope intercept, and standard form for each line. Okay, so we have a line through the point negative five, one, and a slope of seven. Let's start with point slope form. Okay, so we have y minus y1. y1 is one. So y minus one is equal to m, which is seven, times x minus x1. So x minus negative five is x plus five. Okay, so my, my point slope form y minus 1 is equal to 7 times x plus 5. Okay, now if I simplify this, I'm going to get my slope-intercept form. So it's as simple as simplifying. Um, so to do that, I'm going to distribute this out, and I get y minus 1 is equal to 7x plus 35, and then I'm going to solve for y by adding 1 to both sides. So I get y is equal to 7x plus 36, Okay, that's my slope-intercept form. And then in standard form, I'm just going to move that uh, 7x over. So if I do that, okay, by subtracting 7x from both sides, because again, remember standard form, ax plus by equals c, where a cannot be negative, right? So that's going to happen here. So we have negative 7x plus y equals 36. Well, since this can't be negative, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. And when I do that, everything's just going to change signs, and I'll be left with this. I'll be left with 7x minus y equals negative 36. All right, now I'm in standard form. All right, let's look at another one. What happens if I have these two points? Uh, and they want to know the point-slope form, slope-intercept form, standard form. Okay, so what I need, I always need a slope. So if I don't give me a slope, i got to find it. So again, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In this case, that's going to be 3 minus negative 6 over 1 minus 4. All right, so 3 minus negative 6 is positive 9. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Ne uh, 9 divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 3. Okay, so my slope, my m value, m is equal to negative 3. And now that I know that, I can plug in, I'm going to use the easy point here. I can choose either one, but I'm going to use 1, 3. Okay, so I have y minus y1. y1 is 3, is equal to m negative 3 times x minus x1, so x1 is 1. There's my point slope form. If I simplify that, okay, so notice I'm just going to simplify it here. I'm going to rewrite it and I'll simplify it. Okay, this, was, this is the same thing as y minus 3 is equal to negative 3x plus 3. If I add 3 to both sides, I get y is equal to negative 3x plus 6. 
and I'm in slope intercept form from the last lesson. And then standard form, I'm just gonna move that 3x over. So I would get, I'd add 3x to both sides, right? So I got 3x plus y is equal to six. And then I'm in standard form. So um, hopefully this is helpful to see. Those are just three different ways to write the same line. If you graphed this one in Desmos, this one in Desmos, this one in Desmos, you would get the same line three times. Okay, there's just different ways of writing the same equation. All right, guys, that's all I have for this time. Um, we will work a couple more of these in class. Please come to class with questions, um, and um, we'll see you guys next.